Well, hello there, everyone. I'm gonna be constructing some buildings for my N-scale layout. And the first one I'm going to be working on here is this DPM warehouse kit. This is an older kit, and it's you know, still in the old packaging, the bags that they used to uh, ship this stuff into. And I kinda like buying these older kits because when they were made, the molds were still pretty new, and the detail is can be anyway a little bit better than newer kits that come out because the molds are obviously more more used up at this point in time. So I'm just going through here and unpacking everything out of this bag, and it's it's you know <laughs> it's it's interesting to try to get all the stuff out of this bag, but we ended up doing that anyway getting it all out of there. You know, sort of, you see the building is, it's, it's each side is on its own little part trees there, which we're gonna have to cut out. We've got some clear plastic here for the windows, which we may or may not use. I think I did use that actually. Um, you can also use some tinted glass too. Of course, I got this little protective sleeve. We got some sheets of white, smooth styro, uh, styrene right here. I almost said styrofoam. Styrene here, and this is for the roof and the floor and uh, whatever else we end up needing to use this for. Here's the instructions to this kit here. You can pause this and take a look at it if you want to. We've got 1080p video here, good quality video, so you can be able to read all that if you want to. Uh, you can see here a little bit closer up shot here, you got the building here. and I found these instructions to be okay, but you kind of have to figure out how this goes together kind of do a little bit of work on that but you got that office right there which I have yet to have built for this project because I'm probably not going to use that I'll probably save that for something else I might use that on the steam shop actually so here's everything laid out here you can see everything's on the park trees here you got one side of the main building and then you've got these office I'm going to call it an attached office three smaller walls here um, and they're really good detail I'm gonna have to do a lot of cutting though here. Get those extra bits of plastic off the edges there. But the brick detail is very nice on these kits, very thick, sturdy, and I found it were actually very straight too, so that's a good thing. Cutting all these little nubs off with the flash, the fl flash, yeah, fl uh, flush cutters. And a nice little cheap harbor freight flush cutters, are a little, although those flush cutters are not as cheap nowadays at Harbor Freight as they used to be. You used to be able to get those things for a buck or two over there. Now they're really like four bucks now, so they're not really quite as good of a value nowadays as they used to be. And as I'm cutting these all out here, you can see how nice that detail, brick detail is on the walls there and the window, nice and crisp windows that are molded into this. After getting those little nubs cut off there, you can see we're still gonna have to clean up those edges a little bit, but it's not too bad. The edges of the walls there are kind of tapered a little bit, so those will have to be uh, sanded flat. In fact, the instructions actually say that. Um, the front there where the dock is there, those are angled too, as you can see in this video clip here, and those were kind of a bit of a pain in the butt to get flattened out. But there's always so there's, there's there's a lot of ways to skin a cat, so and you could always just fill that stuff in with plastic filler of some kind too, instead of uh, sanding it flat. Okay, so I guess I decided to file that whole thing right there. Looks like I'm shaking the whole bench pretty good there too. And these cheap files always a good thing to have on hand make quick work of this type of stuff, especially with these long buildings. Now this is end scale. It's still quite a pretty big building. So I'm giving the parts here a wash since they're pretty old. They've been sitting around for a while. Just giving them a, a, a hot water, soapy bath water here. Give them a scrub, clean them all up. Any kind of oils that have been s s sitting on the plastic for 20, 20, 25 years here, how old this kid is. Uh, and it's a good idea, you know. It probably would be a good idea to wear gloves for this just so I don't get new finger oils on the plastic, but since my hands are being 
wash at the same time. There really shouldn't be any finger oils at this point in <laughs> touching handling the model. But uh, yeah, it gets all that old, that, I mean, that plastic crap that was shaved off of there too. Cleans it all up real nice there. And that, that's usually a good thing to do on models in general. Give them a good washing and scrubbing there. And of course you want to make sure you rinse out all that soap. We got all that brick detail there and get that stuff all nice and cleaned out there and ready for some assembly. So now that the walls have dried here, I'm gonna go ahead and paint these with some spray paint here. We're gonna do a little bit of a primer first. This is practically white. Um, just gonna go ahead and mist that on there. I like to do this as a first step. It's not, not because I feel like the plastic needs to be primered before painting it, but it's easier. The way I'm gonna paint this building, I'm basically laying the grout lines in right now. So we're doing the, the white, the light gray primer here, which will look like uh, mortar in between the bricks here. And uh, don't mind that little cat hair right there. <laughs> Stuck to that. You know, it's funny how cat hair sticks to everything, doesn't it? But yeah, so uh, this box, uh, it's amazing how all that nasty stuff there kind of showed up after spraying that. And then, uh, yeah, here we go right here with the way it looks after we did a light uh, misting of that primer. I didn't want to put it on too thick and uh, fill in all that grout and then you wouldn't be able to see those lines anymore. So we're going to be using uh, some brown acrylic paint here from Anita's. Uh, just something I had laying around here. And uh, this will be used, what we're going to use, one of the shades of brown anyway, that will be used to uh, paint the brick. Now I'm going to use one of these sponges right here. This is those uh, uh, makeup sponges. Got a whole pack of these things are pretty cheap. They last a long time. So I'm just going to kind of dab that out right there. Stick it in the paint and kind of dab it out there so it's not a big huge blob because I just want to kind of tap it on to the surface of the brick. Pick off that, uh, <laughs> that can here that was there. <laughs> And we're just going to start dabbing it onto the brick very lightly. Cleaning it off a little bit more here because I think there's probably a little bit too much on there. So we're going to just go ahead and dab that on there. Just try and get the top of the brick. And then the mortar will stay in between. And it's a lot easier to do it this way, possibly, theoretically, I guess, maybe. Maybe funner anyway to paint this way than to paint it all brown and then go back and dust in the white. Now I am, you could do that later on too because there's obviously going to be some brown that ends up getting into the into all the crevices there. It's just the way things are but you can see as long as you do a light, uh, a very light touch just kind of drag it around like I'm doing here. It, uh, it actually works pretty good there. Like I said, we're going to use multiple shades of brown here because I'm going to give this a weathered brown. And if you look at brick, it's you look at it up close, it's rarely all the same uh, shade of brown or red. It's usually a variation between the bricks. So we're going to kind of give this a little bit of a variation too. Now I'm not worrying about at this stage uh, getting paint on the uh, window trim or the windows themselves because I'll go back later with a brush and paint that a different shade of, of, of something. For right now, I'm just worried about uh, painting the brick there. And as you can see, even just at this stage, it's giving the brick a nice variation in color that you would normally get after you've already, if you go through and weather it, you'd kind of maybe get that kind of variation there. But just doing it this way, you get that even just with painting it. So, I don't know. This was a, uh, this was a new technique for me I decided to try. I thought it might work out pretty good. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way it worked out. I'd probably do this again. I probably will do this again, actually, on another building, another brick building. And just kind of maybe perfect this technique. But um, it's not too bad, actually. And you can, variation in the brick there um, 
could also mean maybe courses of brick that were replaced at one time too. So I think it looked pretty good. Just even just a quick wiping here, the initial wiping on here. As you can see, this paint, I haven't had to dip it back in there. It lasts, it, it goes a long way actually. This is just straight out of the bottle. Anita's, as you can see. Of course, you could use any brand. The cheapest 50 cent stuff at Walmart will work just fine too. So I'm going on the, the second one here. Now these are the office building sides, so I'm just kind of doing these as a, as, as a test first to see how this technique is going to work out. Um, it's always good to test new things out on places that you don't really care too much about before you go whole hog on the thing. But uh, at this point I'm just kind of like getting used to it, trying to, try to figure out how this is going to work, if this is going to work at all. And if it doesn't work out, hey, I've always got the spray can. actually kind of thinking now that I look at these, this video footage, maybe I should have left the windows white. I, I think it might look better white than what I chose, but anyway, yeah, it's looking pretty good so far. So now the sides are painted here with the brown. I'm going to go ahead and start painting the doors and windows here. Now I've got kind of this yellowish color, and I thought it looked pretty good. As a contrast, you know, a lot of people paint these doors and windows green. I thought it'd go with kind of like a like a a lighter yellow, yellowish brown kind of a color. And I'm just kind of going through here and with a very fine tipped brush, getting in all those little crevices. And I'm just going through there and just, little, just going ahead and painting those. And at this stage, all the doors and windows are painted now. So just kind of a rough, a rough uh, coat on here right now to go back through there and, and touch those corners up on those windows a little bit. And we're glowing the building up here right now using these machinist blocks and uh, a little bit of uh, Plastistruct. That'll bond these corners very, very well. Just let that run down there, and then we'll let that sit for a little bit there, and keep those walls and stuff nice and straight and nice angles, nice straight angles. And that's why I like these machinist blocks, because you get that nice 90 degree angle on those, and the weight, it holds it right into that pad there. So now I'm giving the, the roof pieces a shot of paint here. This is just flat black. I know it looks kind of gray in the video, but it's, it's just flat black. Nothing fancy. Some cheap Walmart 88 cent flat black right here. And attach the roof. You gotta first put these little strips of styrene on here. And there's no real guide anything on here and the plastic to tell you where to line these up. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it to where I think it looks pretty good uh, related to how far the, the, the roof is actually sitting down into the building itself, how much of an edge there is around there. Um, but like, yeah, there's no, there's no guide or anything like that says uh, no lines or anything like that to say, hey, this is where you're supposed to put this roof support. It's just kind of like, you just gotta kind of wing it. Now on this side of the building here, they give you one strip and it's, not really quite long enough to be cut in half and then fill that entire gap in. So 
um, but it's it's still enough plastic to keep the roof uh, from sagging or anything but it's uh, it, it doesn't quite reach all the way across or neither did the other one actually but it, it, it still works just fine this is kind of tricky because you kind of have to figure out something to measure with while you're lining because you want all these sides to be the same the same distance down from the top edge of the roof there and uh, so yeah you just kind of have to uh, figure out a way to measure that and uh, we're doing a little bit of a test fit here to see how that worked out how it's fitting in there how it's looking eh, not doing too bad So the sheet of styrene for the roof here didn't quite exactly reach to the edge. I don't remember if I just miscut it. I might have, I probably miscut it, but I ended up having to go back and fill it in here with a little piece of plastic, in which I later painted. And I'm gluing those, so I got those two side supports in there. I'm going through and gluing the end supports of the roof there in place while the roof is installed so that I get it, you know, basically where it needs to be. And it's easier this way. I don't have to get any special tools out to measure that. So now a little piece of plastic I put in there to fill in the gap. I'm just painting that black with this paint pen here. And it kind of works, I don't know. Ended up getting out some real paint, I think, for this. So I got out the real paint here, the testers, and I'm going around the edge of the building here with this stuff. And what this is doing is simulating tar that has been uh, rolled around the edge of the building to seal the roof. And I'm not caring about being partic particularly straight, perfect, getting some on the sides because that's the way a real building would be because people that are up there slapping that stuff around with rollers and brushes and stuff really wouldn't give two, two cares about uh, how straight and perfect their lines were. All they cared about would be uh, uh, if they got the tar on there between the roof and the side of the building sealed up there. So I'm just kind of haphazardly, as I feel like it here, drawing some, maybe some tar that would have been put on the roof at some point to seal up some cracks. You know, someone went through with a brush or a roller or something like that up on the roof, sealed some cracks up. And again, none of this has to be perfect because it's not perfect on a real roof either. It's not like they mask it out and draw in a straight line. It's not like cracks crack in a straight line. So I'm just kind of going through and, you know, just whatever I feel like, whatever tickles my fancy. And making some blobs in the corners there and just blobbing it on because it'll, it'll shrink when it dries. I'm trying to make it I'm trying to make it look like there's a it's a little bit elevated over the sprayed paint and doing some little blotches here and there like someone went in and put a little tar patch here tar patch here slapped a little bit here and there so it's just the initial the, the fat layer of tar that we're putting on the roof here so I realized I needed to finish assembling the dock here and I'm finding that uh, this piece of plastic that I painted here that they give you, this doesn't really, it, the way they did this isn't really very good here. There's no, there's no way to really attach this except to the top of the, the top of the dock there on top of it. And just kind of let it hang, hang over there. Um, kind of like that right there. And the only way you can really, I ended up, what I did is I ended up cutting out to fit around the uh, the brick there and then gluing it in place just basically as you see it right here but it's a shame they didn't really think of that a little bit better I'm that's unfortunate I, I, th I think that could have been handled a little bit better and maybe I could have handled it a little bit better I don't know but that's what I thought about <laughs> that's all I thought about when I was doing this this stage is just mark it with uh, where I'm gonna have to trim it down a little bit there and then go ahead and trim it down and glue it into place. 
So I'm using this file here to do it because the file is roughly the same size as the, the, the brick columns there that I have to file around. And so it, it wasn't perfect. I, I maybe try to do something a little bit differently next time, but um, sometimes trying to cut this stuff with a, a knife can end up being a problem too. But uh, so I figured I'd just try filing it down to where I needed to go probably fall a little too much out of it but nonetheless that's what I did for this particular project to make that fit <laughs> next time I'd probably do something a little different than that but it, it works I guess you go back and fill those holes in with something so I had this little strip left over and I'm gluing it into place under where uh, I had to file around the columns there on the dock and just because there was some light penetration stuff like that so I figured I'd just glue this extra scrap piece in that I had after uh, cutting that stuff down So I really need to age that nice, perfect black there. So I'm smearing on some pastel chalks here that I shaved down into a little, little pile there. And again, I'm using the, uh, the uh, makeup sponges here and just kind of blotching it around, rubbing it around. This is what's nice about flat paint is that it, it uh, gets into the, the powders get into there very easily. I'm just kind of aging that dock a little bit there, making it look like it's been out in the sun for a while. And a lot of trucks parked up on it, a lot of feet, a lot of things spilled on it maybe. Just trying to age it about 50, 60, 70 years here. <laughs> and I'm getting ready to do the roof here and I'm shaving down this chunk of white here. And we're going to go in there and blotch that onto the roof there with the uh, cosmetic wedgie sponge there, the makeup sponge. Just kind of do the same thing we did on the dock there. And kind of age that, age that roof there about 50 years. You can see how those tar lines that I put in there kind of all of a sudden pop out. That's kind of what really happens is that, that tar tends to fade and bleach a little bit quicker sometimes depending on the material that was used than the roof. It's got a nice little elevation too to that stuff. You can see that it just stands out a lot better that there was some different, different ages of tar patches, tar streaks and stuff have been applied over the years. A lot of dirt, a lot of grime, a lot of dust over the years just kind of embeds itself into that roof there. I'm assuming it would be like a roll roof or something like that that would have been slathered on there years ago. So now what I'm doing is there's some areas on this roof now that I've got the, the powder applied here that I want to just kind of make look like there's been some puddles of water collecting here. So I'm just using some water and making some puddles and some streaks here to make it look like it's running down a little bit here and there. And this is, this is just so that it gives a little bit of an effect of, of the weathering powder that being dirt. Uh, that there's been water there at some time that has, you know, evaporated, but there's still, you know, you still got that that mark left behind that the water has. So they might have a little low spot over here in the corner of the roof here where a lot of the water runs to. This is something that uh, you could definitely add some some kind of uh, roof drainage to this. Uh, I think would really work nice. I was thinking about doing that. I haven't gotten to that point yet on this building. Um, I did order some Woodland Walther's uh, roof details. And I put a couple of those on this building. You get a lot in those uh, roof detail kits. 
And the same thing with the dock here. You know, you can just make some little water patches here, like water's been collecting there. And uh, <clears throat> once it dries, it gives a really nice effect. If you wanted to make wet water puddles, obviously you could use some super glue, some drops of super glue, or uh, you know, if you want to use some some of your epoxy or whatever you could too. A super glue would probably be pretty good for a, a building like this clear coat. Um, some acrylic clear coat maybe. So now that the weathering is done, I'm going back here with a Sharpie and I'm kind of drawing in some new little lines right here. Maybe some little, some tiny, tiny, tiny little cracks that have been filled recently in the roof. They're going to be the, the, the blackest of them all, the darkest color of them all. And yeah, maybe some, maybe represents the new little spider cracks that are forming too. I don't know, either way you could go with that. And we're making some wider patches here as though, as if someone has just come up here in the last week or so. And uh, since the last rainstorm and uh, has applied some new patches in certain areas here. So they had some new water leaks in the building. So someone got up there and slattered on some new tar in places. So here's the building as it's basically turned out more or less here. Like I said, I did go back at some point after this and, and kind of touched the little areas up here and there. But for the purposes of this video, this is basically what it turned out as. I kind of like the, uh, the way the dock under the, under the dock turned out right there, the brick. That was funny enough, kind of my favorite area there. I like how there's some extra little blotches of mortar that kind of stuck out there, which is what really happens on, on a lot of these buildings. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, fit the uh, windows into place here and I'm just going to cut the whole frickin' sheet up here into long strips and glue the whole strips into place. Because they give you a lot of, uh, a lot of clear plastic uh, for windows here so you might as well use it up unless you plan on trying to save it for other projects. And we're just using some good old fashioned shears scissors, whatever terminology you care to use for these. So once again, some nice 99 cent Harbor Freight shears right here. And I'm just gonna fit those into place there, kind of eyeball it and trim it as I, as I think it needs to be here. So I'm using this canopy glue to glue these windows in and I, and I like this stuff because you're not going to fog the windows up like uh, super glue and Z, uh, CA can do um, and it dries crystal clear too. Uh, this is something I use to uh, attach headlights on model cars too. Uh, works really nice. So it's going to take a little while to dry but that's alright. No, no need to be in a big rush. So we'll just put this window right in there and then uh, we'll just weigh it down with some paint bottles there and we'll let it set up. Now this part took the longest of, the, of, of all the things I did in the model build because I had to wait for the canopy glue to dry. It's a lot better than other glues. Other glues you could use too if you're really careful with, but it's kind of funny how those other, other glues tend to wick up into places that you don't want them to be. So here's what the building looks like right now. Finished, completed. And uh, I haven't put the roof details on it yet. But uh, at some point down the line, I'll go ahead and do that. But the Walther's detail kits are pretty cheap. So you get a lot of stuff in those. So definitely a good value to get to give these buildings a little bit of an extra detail that they don't come with. So this was a, this was a good build. Uh, I wish the, the canopy glue wasn't the, the longest part of the build. Just waiting for that to dry. But I think this turned out pretty good. And now I have a building, another building, but to uh, add to the layout. So while I'm doing my 
construction of the layout, I have a placeholder for the building, and so I can decide where I want to put that on the layout. I've got a lot more buildings I need to build, so there will be more videos of building builds coming up on this channel. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again right here. Take care, everyone, and peace out.